The Adventure Game was a game show that was originally broadcast on UK television channels BBC One and BBC Two between 24 May 1980 and 18 February 1986. The story in each show was that the two celebrity contestants and a member of the public had travelled by space ship to the planet Arg. Their overall task varied with each series. For example, the team might be charged with finding a crystal needed to power their ship to return to Earth. The program is often considered to have been a forerunner of the Crystal Maze. The opening and closing music is, Duo in G Major, Opus 34, Rondo, by Ferdinando Carulli, performed by Julian Bream and John Williams from the album Together. <laughs> program origins The program came about because Patrick Dowling who also introduced episodes of Series 2 had an interest in Dungeons and & Dragons and wanted to televise a show that would capture the mood. The program also had a similar sci-fi feel to the work of Douglas Adams, who was asked by Patrick to write the show, as he had already agreed to write a TV series of his own radio show The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The first two series were written and produced by Dowling and directed by Ian Oliver, who wrote and produced the final two series after Dowling retired from the BBC. Topic the characters Arg was inhabited by shapeshifting dragons known as Argons. As a reference to this, most proper nouns in the program including Argond were anagrams of the word dragon. To avoid scaring contestants, Argons commonly shifted form, mostly to human, a few minutes before the contestants arrived. Notable characters within the game included, the Rangdo, who was the ruler of Planet Arg and initially referred to as Uncle by the other Argons. In the first series, his human form was played by Ian Messiter, who appeared as an old professor in a velvet jacket, but in later series he became one of the few Argons not to appear as a dragon. In series 2 and 3, he became an aspidistra atop an elegant plant stand, he could move around the room and roared and shook when he was angry the Rangdo was controlled by Kenny Baker. Any human meeting the Rangdo immediately had to placate him by bowing while uttering the phrase Granda. Granda. In the last series, the Rangdo changed into a teapot instead, spouting steam when displeased. Durang, series 1, played by BBC newsreader Moira Stewart. Nord, series 1 to 3, played by Charmian Gradwell, whose job it was to explain the initial stages of the game to the contestants. Dorgan, series 4, played by Sarah Lamb, who took over from Nord in the final series. Gandor, series 1 to 4, played by Chris Lever, an ancient half-deaf butler who took the contestants through most of the puzzles and refereed the Vortex and Drogna games. In some episodes, he could only hear when he was wearing his spectacles, which he continually and conveniently misplaced. Rongad, series 3 and 4, played by Bill Homewood, because he was Australian, spoke English backwards and could only understand the contestants if they did the same. His Australian accent was a mild clue to help the contestants realize he was speaking backwards. Noted for habitually singing waltzing Matilda in reverse, and exclamations of Doug Yrev, when the contestants did well. He appears in every episode of Series 3 and Episode 2 of Series 4. Angered series 4, actor unknown, was an Argonde who never seemed to turn into a human. She always misbehaved when Gandor and Dorgan were checking over the puzzles. The Mole, Series 2, played by Leslie Judd, pretended to be one of the regular contestants but was actually working against them. The actress had been a genuine contestant in the first series, the look of the characters in Argon form was quite different in the various series. In Series 1, they looked like dragons, and each was rather distinct. In Series 2, they didn't look much like dragons, but were furry, with no tails and mask-like faces, and primarily differed in color. In series 3 and 4, their heads returned to looking like dragons, with ruffs, though they had furry bodies and monkey-like tails, and they were almost identical to each other. Notable contestants included Keith Chegwin, Sue Cook, astronomer Heather Coor, John Craven, Paul Darrow, Noel Edmonds, Sarah Green, Bonnie Langford, James Burke, Elizabeth Estenson, Janet Fielding and Richard Stilgo. The credits for the series listed the human characters as being played by Argons, rather than the other way round. Topic common tasks The contestants had to complete a number of tasks in order to achieve their overall goal i.e. regain their crystal and return to their ship. Many tasks involved the drogna, a small transparent plastic disc containing a solid geometric figure, which was the currency of Arg. 
The value of a drogna was its numbered position in the visible spectrum multiplied by the number of sides of the figure though the contestants usually failed to work this out. For example, a red circle is worth one unit, an orange circle is worth two units, a red triangle and a yellow circle are both worth three, and so on. Tasks which often appeared included, interaction with a computer, in Series 1 a 2D dungeon crawl type game on an HP 9845 technical desktop, then later a text chat with an Apple II that generally failed to provide any useful information until the password was revealed elsewhere and entered into the computer, then in Series 3 and 4 a pseudo 3D first person POV dungeon crawl on a BBC Micro to find the password in the maze. In Series 3, the players were guiding an alien dog-like creature called a Dogren voiced in a deep cockney down his Dogren hole after meeting him in person. In Series 4, the radio-controlled dog puppet was eliminated and the players guided an unseen entity speaking in a Scouse accent to find the password somewhere in the north of the maze. The Drogna game, which usually came in the middle of the program. The rules of play, format and end result of this game was changed frequently, always with each series and sometimes even from one episode to another. One variation from Series 3 was played by two players, one would be a contestant and the other would be a creature known as the Red Salamander of Zardiel. This version of the game became so popular that Acornsoft released a home version for the BBC Micro, written by Patrick Dowling. How many Argons around the pond? This was a game played predominantly in Series 4 just before the Vortex game. Every player had a chance to win, and winners received a green cheese roll or, in later episodes a great crystal of art to triumphant fanfare. This green cheese roll was of use when playing the Vortex. Gandor would compare the game, it would start on a table with a number of drogna inside a velvet bag with drawstrings. He would shake the bag and withdraw some dronias and place them on the table, then asking the first contestant how many argons are around the pond? The contestants would usually either count the dronias, count the non-blue dronias assuming the blue one represented the pond, or add the sides or points of the geometric figures on the dronias, and fail to guess the right number. The key was that Gandor would place his fingers on the table top as he said how many argons are around the pond? The number of fingers he would place down on the table would be the correct answer. Most people did not guess the answer, or they would just happen to get it right by accident. The Vortex series 2 to 4. This was the last task in the program. To return to their ship, the players had to jump between a grid of points, taking turns with their opponent, the Vortex. The Vortex was represented by a video effect generated pulsating column in series 2, and a computer generated flashing column in series 3 and 4. If the human player jumped into the vortex, which they could not see, it would explode and the human was said to have been evaporated, losing the game and making a long trip back to Earth which had to be walked by foot along the interplanetary highway. Patrick Dowling devised the game, believing that his inspiration was probably Nine Men's Morris. <laughs> Episodes Topic. Series 1 It was originally broadcast in 1980 on BBC One on Saturday mornings. Four of five episodes are available on the DVD box set. It was repeated in 1980 on BBC Two on Saturday mid-afternoons. Series 2 It was originally broadcast in 1981 on BBC Two on Monday early evenings, following Doctor Who. Four of five episodes are available on the DVD box set. It was repeated in 1982 on BBC One on Friday late afternoons. Topic <laughs> <laughs> Series Three. It was originally broadcast in 1984 on BBC Two on Thursday early evenings. It is available on the DVD box set. It was repeated in 1985 on BBC Two on Thursday early evenings. Topic Series 4 It was originally broadcast in 1986 on BBC Two on Tuesday early evenings. It is available on the DVD box set. It was repeated in 2002, 2003 and 2004 on the digital TV channel Challenge. 
The four missing episodes disappeared in a mass wiping of children's television programs in the early 1990s. Topic signature tune series 1, 3 and 4, duo in G opus 34 number 2 second MOVT, composed by Ferdinando Carulli and performed by Julian Bream and John Williams series 2, Norwegian Dance opus 35 no. 2, composed by Edvard Grieg and performed by a brass band. Topic. Commercial release A 6-DVD box set of the series was released on 12 June 2017, rated U. The U-rated DVD is Region 2 encoded, with a running time of 665 minutes. The artwork on each disc represents five different colors and shapes of Drogna. Each disc's number can be identified by very small writing around the outer rim of the disc. Series 1 and Series 2 are presented with four episodes on one disc per series, each missing one episode. Series 3 and 4 are complete and split across four discs. Before the DVD release, seven episodes from the first two seasons were made available to buy digitally from the BBC store until it ceased trading on 25 May 2017. <laughs> 